Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and this is the largest, most powerful platform Mazda has ever produced. This is the brand new 2024 Mazda CX-90 in the turbo trim or turbo power plant premium plus trim. In this video, I'm gonna see if it's any good now that I've got it back here on my home turf. Yes, gearheads, this is a pretty important vehicle for Mazda because it marks a lot of firsts for the brand. This is, again, the biggest vehicle they've ever made, and you can option this as the most powerful vehicle that they've ever made, but this is the turbo only trim. They offer a plug-in hybrid variant and also a more powerful Turbo S version, but this is kind of the entry to this power plant it is the same 3.3 liter inline six which is an all new engine design for them two more cylinders than we're used to from mazdas and a just all new architecture all the way around and turbo trim uh, this makes 280 horsepower and 332 pound feet of torque and it only requires regular fuel. You can put premium in it, but unlike the uh, Turbo 4 that we're used to or the higher Turbo S trim of this, doesn't get you any additional power. So yes, you are stuck with 280 horsepower, 332 pound-feet of torque. What is very interesting about this is another first for the Mazda brand. This is a mild hybrid system. So we have an electric motor sandwiched between that inline six and an eight speed automatic transmission. Again, two more gears than we are used to seeing. It's an 11 kilowatt hour electric motor that adds 16.6, .6, interesting, horsepower and 113 pound feet of torque and uses a 30.33 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. All that means that this is a rather fuel efficient vehicle but uh, we'll get into that as we drive it. You can tell, maybe, <laughs> we've got this plastic cover over it, but you can tell this is a rear wheel drive biased platform. Mazda is very proud of that. All CX-90s are all wheel drive, but is it, it is a rear biased platform and you can tell that by the position of the engine. And again, we have that new eight speed uh, automatic transmission. Given that this is an all new platform, an all new design, it's seemingly a fresh sheet design, but rumor has it that this was supposed to be the Mazda 6 sedan replacement. And over the years, it just morphed into a big three row SUV. We won't get too much into the history of that, but there is some part sharing going on on this vehicle and we'll talk about that as we talk about the design. I will say I am very proud to have this on our home turf. There is a lot of history uh, the channel has with this platform. The first ever vehicle we received from Mazda was the vehicle this replaces and that is the Mazda CX-9. And then the first ever vehicle we were invited to review and see for ourselves uh, before the embargo lifted was this vehicle. So we have a lot of history with the, this vehicle, but that doesn't mean it's perfect. Uh, I will say it is very good looking here in person, especially from certain angles. But when I was given those first looks uh, prior to seeing it for myself in person, we got some digital marketing materials for it. I was a little skeptical of the design, but it definitely translates here in person. A very upscale and premium look to that Mazda design up front. I know when the brand introduced the CX-50, they kind of went sharper, more angular, and I really thought that's what we were gonna get here with the 90, but they really kind of softened it up to give it a more premium feel because this brand is trying to go premium and upscale. You can see we have LED lights, LED turn signals, LED running lights, and those turn signals are very similar to what we see in all other Mazda products. They kind of pulsate. Uh, when they come on and go off. You can see we don't have any fog lights on this one. We just have those LED headlights and this big Mazda logo here in the grill. 
hides our radar adaptive cruise control. Otherwise, it is, like I said, an evolution of the Mazda, Mazda design, kind of softened up here for big, luxurious SUV look. Coming around to the side, this is where I'm a little disappointed in the brand and perhaps where maybe you can see some of that change from a midsize sedan to a large three row crossover. There's not a lot going on as you move around to the side. Given that we have the turbo version, not the turbo S, we get the black lower cladding, black wheel arches, and the black faux fender vent there on the fenders. If you get the Turbo S, you get body color, uh, wheel arches, and a chromed fender vent, faux fender vent there on the side. So that's one major way you can tell the difference between a Turbo and Turbo S from the exterior. I do believe this is the one that most people are going to end up purchasing just from uh, a pricing standpoint and the fact that these are probably going to be most available. Coming down to the wheels on our turbo model, we've got 21 inch wheels that are a very nice premium design wrapped in Toyo Open Country tires. They are 275-45 R21 inch rubber. And definitely talk to the intent or design of this vehicle. It is not an off-roader. This uh, was never designed to be a rugged vehicle, but it does have hill descent control. And again, does have a wheel drive. So it can take you to an a remote campground or something like that. As we pin around here to the full side view, you can see there's not a lot of sculpting going down the side. And that is my biggest disappointment with this. I do like when vehicles are not overstyled, but this one almost feels understyled. It's just very clean and simplistic here on the side. And with a few tweaks, this would almost look like a minivan. Kind of square off that back end just a little bit more. This might resemble more of a minivan than an SUV. It does have a very low door opening, which does translate to better ease of use getting in and out, but I don't know. Just let me know down in the comments below what you think. And then this, it's perhaps the most controversial section for me, this three uh, rear quarter angle. It just feels a little bit hunchbackish to me. And the reason this is like this is Mazda really wanted to emphasize and give room to the third row passengers. The Mazda CX-9 that we had, whew, that third row was an emergency seat only. It was very tight. It was two person. Uh, here in our turbo model, we have a three person though, eh, I'd say it's still a two person rear seat, but they really wanted to emphasize and give room to those rear passengers, which gives us a little bit of a hunchbackish look. Just uh, seeing how far that very center section right here pokes out. I don't know, it just seems a little too pronounced to me. Again, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Coming around back to the back, again, very premium evolution of the Mazda style and design, and again, looks a little hunchbackish uh, from a direct rear view, but you can see we have LED lights, uh, pulsating turn signals, everything that you would expect from a premium three row SUV back here. And this new badge, again, all models are all wheel drive. All models are hybrid of some sort. We have the mild hybrid here, but they do also offer the plug-in hybrid, which is another first for the brand. We sampled that in San Francisco earlier this year. Uh, Holly and I drove it, so you can go check that video out. We do have a power operated hatch. I've got the vehicle running, so I can't do any of the kick to open anything, but you can see a rather nice quick opening rear hatch that gives you a decent amount of room back here. It's not just overly large uh, by any means, but it is uh, decent and comparable with the class. You get 14.9 cubic feet of space with the third row up. And I'm going to go ahead and move my backpack here, just showing you about what we've got space-wise, how deep it is. And we do have a false load floor here, but there really isn't much of anything underneath it, just uh, a nice storage for your tools and everything you would need here. You may be asking, well, where's the spare tire? And that is under this kind of flimsy plastic shelf that does come out. There's your spare, and in typical Mazda fashion, the Bose subwoofer is stuffed right there in the middle. 
So you have that to contend with and worry with uh, as you need to go change the flat. But we're gonna go ahead and put that back down. I will note, you do get a little bit of side storage right here for small items, but we have a 60-40 split bench rear seat here. Again, we have the three-person rear seat. The Turbo S gets a two-person rear seat. So technically, we have a seven-seat configuration here in our Turbo model. Though, again, you'll see in a little bit just how thin this seat is. They manually flip and fold down to give you more storage space back here and give you a nice flat load floor. With those seats down, you get 40 cubic feet of space. Mazda does a really good job of giving you lots of access to it. The opening is large, wide, and does a good job of uh, allowing you all that space. Fold the second row down and you get a 74.2 cubic foot uh, measurement here in the three row Mazda CX-90. And then we've got some additional power ports back here. If you want to do some tailgating, uh, have a little power back here. Get a couple of hooks for bags if you want to hook grocery bags so they don't go rolling around. And I'll go ahead and show you now uh, because I don't know what our lighting situation will be when I'm actually back here myself. But I like how if you've got the seats folded, you've got a little bit of storage here uh, for the seat belts so they don't go rattling around. And we do get USB-C power on both sides back here in the back with two cup holders on each side. Folding the seats back up is really easy. You simply pull on the latch and pull the seat up. Very simple. And I will go ahead and call out, at least on the back of the seats here, we do have three top tethers all the way across. Last thing before we close the hatch, this is how it originally opens. It does go just a little bit more. I'm 5'10", so it's about a six foot opening but this is where Mazda puts the buttons for you to close it. And it does close rather quickly. Gives you one beep to know it's coming down and then comes to a nice soft close. Before we get into this one, I do wanna show you the key. It is your typical Mazda proximity key. Nothing special or different about this uh, moving forward into the next generation of Mazda products. All your buttons are here on the side. We have lock, unlock, your hatch button, and a panic button. You can deploy a physical key from the bottom, but it is a proximity key. You can keep this in your pocket purse, wherever you keep your key, and just walk up to the vehicle. And uh, on the front doors, we have passive entry. So you put your hand on the back here, the mirrors fold out to let you know it's unlocked. And then to lock it back, you can just push on that little square right there that locks it back up. Notice uh, I can hear it back here. It also locks and unlocks that fuel door uh, so that you can be uh, secure in knowing nobody's gonna get some fuel from you if your vehicle's locked. Looking at the door before we climb in, you can see we do have the black Napa leather interior on this one. So it might be just a little bit dark as we move in. But being that we have the turbo model, we get this um, faux metallic look. It looks like it should be a textured uh, material here on the door, but it is not. I do give Mazda props for not doing gloss black plastic. Really like that. And just gives you a splash of something unique and interesting and different that isn't a sea of black. Otherwise, we get parts sharing with other Mazdas, which isn't a bad thing. Typical Mazda door handle, lock button, and uh, express mirrors all the way around, or windows all the way around, and your mirror controls right here. You can power fold them if you need to. Get a little bit of storage down here in the door, and then you get this pistol grip, like door close uh, handle, but no like actual handle here, like most vehicles have for you to grab and close or for you to store some small items in. Coming around to the seats, I will go ahead and say we've got an eight-way eight power uh, front set of seats here. So both front seats are eight-way power. We have two-person memory here on the driver's seat. And you can see we've got two-way lumbar as well. Looking at the seats themselves, they are nice. Again, they are Napa leather seats. Second row seats are as well. I don't believe the third row seats are. I do believe it is relegated to the front two. If we had the bench seat in the middle, again, it would only be the outboard seats that have the Napa leather. But it is a nice touch. We get all the 
this contrasting kind of rose gold look, including down your spine, down into the seat. These are heated and ventilated. And one thing I really like is the vehicle remembers what you had the heat or ventilation set to anytime you power the vehicle off and back on. That is always a nice touch. It is fall here in East Texas. I want my seat heat to come on. Uh, if I had it on last, though, uh, we are getting into this uh, time of year when the weather is a little uh, finicky and doesn't know if it's fall, winter, spring, or summer. So maybe that isn't such a good thing. Who knows? Coming into the vehicle, closing the door, and putting our foot on the brake and pushing the engine start button here, you can see Mazda has leaned in to 12.3 inch displays. This is the first vehicle with a full digital uh, gauge cluster here in the center. Previous Mazdas all used that same uh, center digital section with uh, actual analog gauges on the outsides. We've gone fully digital here and this does customize and change as you go through different drive modes. We'll get to that here in just a second, but I do want to start over my left knee and work my way across. Much like some of the other Japanese vehicles this competes with, I'm looking at the Toyota Highlander, Grand Highlander, and the like. Get a lot of buttons over your left knee here, most of which are perfectly fine to be over here, but uh, I've got just a little nitpick with this one. This is their engine start stop. They call it I stop. It, it does not get the same auto start stop a circle logo uh, that we're familiar with in other vehicles so that is how you keep the vehicle from shutting off and stop and go tra uh, traffic get your traction button here your parking sensor a little poverty button right here to let you know you didn't get the top trim your safety button right here and then your hatch two-person memory with your uh, setting button right here. Those are all the buttons here. And then we get a little bit of the leather dash right here with contrasting stitching. Again, with that rose gold theme, I really like the use of colors, materials, and textures in here. Very nice look. That way it's not just a sea of black. Again, showing that Mazda wants to go premium and upscale. A steering wheel is your typical Mazda steering wheel. Nothing different here. Uh, you get all your adaptive cruise control buttons over here, your radio control buttons over here, as well as your info button for giving you different information here on your uh, right side of your infotainment screen. And you can pan through a few different uh, features there uh, with that info button. You can see uh, we've got a very nice clear crisp display, but I'm going to go ahead and call attention here. We've got the My Drive uh, system. There are technically four different drive modes. We've got Normal, which is what we're in now, Sport, Off-Road, and Towing. I'm going to go ahead and flip it up here to Sport. It takes a little while to fully engage into Sport mode, but when it does, everything goes red and looks very sporty. I really like how all the gauges now look like turbines uh, and gives a really cool sporty look. And then we're going to tab down we've got normal and off-road and when we go into off-road again takes a little bit but changes the font uh, and the overall design here on the gauge cluster it even changes what is it on the center screen giving me a compass because again if you're venturing off-road you're going to want to know you're heading where you're going so that's a nice touch as well no matter what drive mode you're in if you hit your adaptive cruise control button, you get this uh, changed display that has a little more focus on all your driver centric uh, features here in the middle with your lane keep. And the vehicle just lets you know that it knows that there are vehicles around you. You get a little box uh, denoting vehicles around you in traffic. Now, again, no matter what drive mode you're in, it does look like this, but it takes on the theming of that particular drive mode. So if we go to sport again, it's all red and sporty. So that that's a nice look right there. And then your typical Mazda horn coming over here again, 12.3 inch uh, display. It is very large and a very nice departure from these smaller screens that Mazda has been using in their other vehicles. It does have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it still uses the rotary knob that may or may not be favored in your household. I go back and forth on this uh, on every different uh, vehicle that we get, but uh, it, 
it, it works well for what it is. It, it is not my least favorite uh, way to interact, but when you are in CarPlay, you can see it is a touch screen. So full touch screen connectivity here. It is a little bit far, so you do have to lean forward to touch it, but just something to know there. We get more of that leather uh, or faux leather here on the dash with stitching. You can get various different dash looks. Uh, they do offer a light maple, again, on the Turbo S Premium Plus models. Uh, we don't have that here. A couple of air vents. Uh, your HVAC controls do feel like uh, they've come out of any other Mazda product, which is not a bad thing. We do have tri-zone air in here, so dual zone up front with a third zone for the rear. Again, my heated seat remembers that I had it on, which is a nice touch. It does turn off after a little bit, so it doesn't like burn me over time. I like that. But three mode heat, three mode ventilation, and then you can see we can sync the front two right here. We do have a Qi wireless charger. I like how it is up here instead of back under the handle here like we saw on the CX-50. And that means it actually works. On the CX-50, because my iPhone 14 uh, Pro Max is so large, it did not want to charge in the CX-50 no matter how I positioned it or moved it. Here, it actually does work. And being that it is under the HVAC controls, it is a better placement than what we saw in that CX-50 with cup holders right underneath here. So this is a much better layout and the cup holders have moved to a, a kind of forward and aft uh, configuration here under this panel. We do get the drive selector from the MX-30 electric vehicle that we've sampled already here on this channel. You pull the button and push it over for reverse and pull it back for drive. And that is how you access that. I will note, very interesting, the engine is actually on right now, but it is making a hybrid vehicle beep beep backup sound. which is just interesting. Again, this is the first hybrid vehicle that Mazda has made. I guess they are covering all bases, uh, making sure people hear you when you're backing up, whether that engine is on or off. Can see as we are in reverse, we get a nice 360 camera system. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it in park and hit the camera button right here. I like that you actually get a camera button. And now we get a forward view with trajectory. So that is a nice touch here in the Mazda. You can actually tab over and see different views. Those are my front wheels. So that's a nice touch. And I can get a wide view uh, out the front as well. So lots of different options again using the wheel control uh, here up front. Again, your my drive, uh, drive mode settings, hill descent control, and your typical Mazda wheeled interface. I like how it is all very handy to you right here as you lay your arm on the center armrest. This is a split opening armrest, so you don't have to disturb your passenger if you want to get into this very shallow cargo compartment or storage area. Very interesting just how shallow it is. It does reveal two USB-C ports. These both interface with the uh, infotainment system, but I like how Mazda stepped into the modern era with USB-C ports uh, in the fronts of their vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and pan around to me. We do have the pano glass roof in this model, which doesn't compromise headroom for me at all at 510. I'm very comfortable right here. Again, two person memory seat. Do also have a tilt telescoping steering wheel that is, I'll go ahead and show you a manual tilt and telescope steering wheel. So I can really get comfortable here and uh, find that perfect driving position. To open this, we've got a, uh, latch or button right here that does everything from the sunshade to the glass itself but it's not overly sensitive like hyundai and kia products so that's a nice touch i will say the actual portion that opens is rather small given uh, the overall glass space and typically the overall glass space is a little on the small side but it still does lighten it up in here from this dark interior we also have a frameless rear view mirror here. No camera mirror on this model, but we do get our home link controls down here. We also get the indicator lights up here for your uh, seat belts in both rows back behind you and some sunglass holder 
uh, spot right here. I will kind of question the build quality a little bit, the design. This is very flimsy, and if you go to use uh, the sunglasses, you're going to be kind of shaking all of this. Otherwise, it, I mean, it doesn't rattle or anything. It's just very kind of flimsy looking. That's enough for the front seat. Let's get back to those back two rows because I know you're dying to see me climb into that third row and see if it truly is capable of holding adults. Coming up to the back doors, it is very easy to get in. They open nice and wide, very nice and wide. So if you need to open an, or open them wide to get a child seat in or for people to climb in that third row, it can be done. I will also note we do have manual sunshades back here on the back windows, which is a nice touch. You get window controls, nothing else back here. Couple cup holders in the door and a little bit of additional storage. We do have the captain's chairs in our model here with uh, the accenting, stitching, and everything as well. Will note, you may have seen in the center console, uh, these actually are removable uh, to find the lower latch points for child seats. Again, we only have these weeks at a time, a week at a time, so we store them in the center console. I, I don't know what owners do for the life of the fact that it, uh, they have a child seat installed in their vehicle, um, but just wanted to call that out that those are fully removable. Coming in, getting behind myself and closing the door, I've got plenty of room. It, it does seem like Mazda gave a majority of the additional room here to the second row seats, and I like that. I am very comfortable back here. I do have a couple air vents on the back of the center console. No ceiling mounted air vents here, but we do get uh, three rows of air vents, so I'll show you that when I climb back in the back. This is a third zone climate control system, so I can set it to whatever I want back here, and I do have heated uh, captain's chairs back here. I had to get the Turbo S to get the ventilated, so yet again, another poverty button to remind me I didn't get the Turbo S. We also have two USB-C ports back here, so you have some additional power. And then we've got map pockets on the backs of both front seats, which is a nice touch. And this little, that's my air freshener, cup holder tray that I'm curious about because uh, Whataburger large drinks are going to really test just how sturdy this is under weight and if you push something down too hard well you can see what the end result is again if you get the turbo s you get a full center console back here so again just another reason you may want to shop the turbo s model coming around to me the seat is currently in its upright position so you can see just how little headroom I have here, but fortunately these seats do recline. You can get rather nice and comfortable back here, and they recline a fair amount. I mean, I'm not going to be going to sleep back here. I, I'm typically the driver of our family, so no big complaints back here, but they are not the farthest back when it comes to reclining. Now for the moment you are probably waiting for just how family or adult friendly is that third row and for that, I'm gonna go ahead and climb out here and show you how to fold these seats forward. There's a latch here. It folds the seat back forward, so we will not be doing this on Tucker's side. Uh, the seat bottom stays flat. We get these nice rails in the bottom, and that gives me access to the three-person third row in our turbo model. Again, we do get that pass-through in between the captain's chairs, but I do believe this is the way that you're gonna be accessing the third row most often. I will note before I climb in, when I climb out, I do get a little grip right here uh, to help me get myself out of this third row seat. But let's go ahead and climb in. You can see we've got a couple steps here leading the way to the back seat. This is a little, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, but on floor, there isn't a lot of height to this back seat. I'll go ahead and show you the position of my legs. So my knees are up and I'm doing my best to locate my feet in between the tracks here because if I truly want three people across, the center passenger is gonna put their feet there and so on and so forth. So uh, if three people are riding back here, you can, in theory, get your feet between the tracks. We'll go ahead and pull the seat all the way back which I cannot do over my feet and 
recline it back. So this is in its most upright position. This is probably not where this person's gonna be riding. They're probably gonna be riding a little bit more like I was after I showed you that it reclined. It's not a terrible third row. It is completely usable. My feet are trapped uh, underneath the seat right now and my knees are touching the back of the seat. But an adult could ride back here without it being a absolute punishment. Again, I showed you earlier, we do get two cup holders and a USB-C port back here and a decent sized rear window so it is not claustrophobically dark back here. So it can be done. Whether or not many will want to is another question altogether. Coming around to me, you can see I actually have a fair amount of headroom back here. Again, going back to the shape uh, of the rear of the vehicle, they really wanted to emphasize that adults could ride back here and adults can without it being a punishment. But again, I don't know that I would put three across back here. You can see just how wide I am in relation to where this third seat belt goes. But I will call out the seat belt actually comes from the seat, not from the ceiling, which I guess it kind of has to given how or where the ceiling ends. This is where the ceiling ends right here. And the only spot for lower latch points for a child seat are here on the passenger side. I mean, just double check. Yep, nothing here on my side. So if you wanted to put a child seat back here, you could go see our family review where I actually do just that. Again, I do want to show you the air vents back here. So nothing up here where you would expect it, but they are down here. So it's going to be blowing up underneath my leg, or I can sit like this and have it blow up at my face. It's better than nothing, but it is not perfect. Oh, just phrase it that way. That is enough of uh, me in all three rows of this uh, three row biggest platform Mazda's ever produced. Let's hop back behind the steering wheel and see how this thing drives. See if it still has that Mazda zoom zoom character that we are, well, quite in favor of. Setting off in the 3.3 liter turbo all wheel drive Mazda CX-90. It's a big, comfortable, three-row luxury SUV, so it's about what you'd expect. I'm going to go ahead and put it into sport drive mode as we pull out onto this little straight section of road, come to a complete stop, foot firmly on the brake, give it some gas, and dump the brake. Sixty. So, rather quick, sporty, it will be more than enough to get you up to speed, on the highway, merging on, which is what most consumers of big three-row SUVs are concerned about. Does it have enough power to get me up and into traffic? Yes. The answer, absolutely yes. Uh, the new eight-speed automatic does a good job of rowing through the gears. And again, I was in sport mode. You could hear uh, just exactly what that sounded like. I will note though, this being the first hybrid, a mild hybrid at that, there are some idiosyncrasies of the hybrid system. I already noted the fact that it beeps uh, to let passers-by know that you're in reverse, even if the engine's on. And the other is in stop-and-go traffic. Again, the electric motor is sandwiched between the engine and transmission. It is a preferred method for me because it does keep the um, all the accessories on when the engine is off in stop-and-go traffic. So I like that a lot. But as Mazda dubs it, the iStop system, it is a little aggressive. Uh, it turns the engine off when you're coasting down hills. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in normal. Woo! I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in normal uh, for the time being and drive like I normally would down a country back road. I'm not really gonna experience it on my drive today, but in my week with this vehicle, I have noticed in stop and go traffic, it takes a little while to get going again if it cuts the engine off. Just something to note uh, that it is a little more aggressive than I would prefer and does kind of have us hitting that I stop off button, which negates the fact that this is a hybrid. So take that into consideration. Something to possibly pay attention to on a test drive. As we have just seen, the universal sign for fun times ahead, we are in a Mazda 
uh, that does have a sporty driving character, at least that's what the brand tells us. I'm gonna go ahead and drop us back into sport drive mode and see how this big three row SUV handles the twisties. We are on those Toyo open country tires, so they are not the most aggressive sporty tires, uh, but here on this very heavily textured back road, they're doing a good job of maintaining the grip. I will say of the suspension, it is sport tuned. It is a little harsher, I will say, than maybe some in the shopping in the segment would prefer. If you got something maybe like a Toyota Grand Highlander, it's gonna be a little bit softer, a little more floaty suspension than what you get here in the Zoom Zoom Mazda CX-90 but that's kind of going in with the brand character of each of those brands. Toyota's built a little more for luxury and a nice poshness, whereas here in the Mazda, more enthusiastic, sporty driving uh, as the roads get curvy. I can say it definitely maintains the fun to drive aspect that Mazda is known for in a big three-row SUV. No, this is not an MX-5 Miata, but you can tell this is a three-row SUV from the company that does make the MX-5 Miata. The steering does not feel too heavy that when you're driving around in traffic, you feel like you're having to get a workout uh, just to turn the wheel. But in sport mode, on a curvy back road, it's not gonna let you down either. It's not gonna be just overly floaty, so you don't know where you're going. It communicates very well to the driver, as does the suspension. Again, firmer, but not harsh. Uh, all around, very comfortable. This is a pleasant SUV to drive, but again, it's geared more toward the driving enthusiast who must have a three-row SUV versus somebody who has a three-row SUV that may want to go and enjoy a road such as this. Again, priorities. The brakes on this are, are very good as well, and they don't throw you uh, uh, forward if you touch them. They aren't overly touchy, overly sensitive. And then uh, we also have Mazda's suite of driver assistance tech on this, lane keeping, stuff like that with a really good head-up display in this that does have blind zone monitors on the head-up display themselves it actually gives you a visual warning if somebody's in your blind spot so i really do like what monster has done overall with this vehicle and as we get into the twisty windy bits i can say even at the least powerful version of this engine uh combination it is a fun sporty little vehicle to drive i can say i am not disappointed with this vehicle. It works well. It's good. It's not great. This is not the most engaging three-row SUV to drive, though that's not really why you're buying a three-row SUV, but it is a Mazda three-row SUV, if that makes any sense. Acceleration's good. Turn-in is good. Brakes are good. Everything is good about this. It's very calm, comfortable, composed. Uh, bumps don't upset it and get you wallowing all over the place. It works quite well. This particular model is priced just over $50,000. And again, like I said on the tour earlier, I do believe this is the trim that most people are gonna get. The turbo trim, maybe not the premium plus that we have here with the more upscale interior. Maybe opting for the bench in the second row uh, with the lower versions of the turbo platform. That is it for me here behind the wheel of the 2024 Mazda CX-90 Turbo here on my home turf. Again, we tested the other two engine combinations, the Turbo S and the plug-in hybrid, when we were in San Francisco earlier this year. You can go check those out. You can also find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, YouTube, Threads, everything is at GT Garage Talk or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com. Absolutely hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you are notified every time we post a new vehicle or new video. But now, as I'm stopped here, about to turn onto a highway with a 60 mile an hour speed limit, let's see how this rear biased all wheel drive really works. Okay, <laughs> it goes. Throws my phone around too. It moves. And on that note, until next time, gearheads, bye.
It's always ready to give you power when you want it. Uh, the eight-speed doesn't leave you hunting. It really is <laughs> just in stop-and-go traffic when that engine shifts off uh, that you're left like, come on, let's go. 